I am Manali Vyas, your host for this webinar. This session will be of 45 minutes along with your Q&A session. The webinar is conducted by Synergita. Synergita is a cloud-based performance management software, which not only automates to resolve all employee performance review pain points, but also enables employee engagement, employee training, and development through its unique features. The first presenter for today's session will be Mr. Suwandi. Suwandi is HR tech consultant and advisor to CHROs. He is expert in HRMS business. He's a well-known name in Singapore and Asia HR tech space. He, inter he interacts with several CHROs and advises them on the HR tech front. So Andy has several years of experience in the overall regional business management of the information system services industry with strong domain knowledge in human resource management. The, sec the second presenter for today's session will be Ms. Joyce Lim. Joyce has worked with several IT MNCs for the past 10 years, and now she heads the business operations for Synergita in Singapore, which includes the sales and business development, supporting clients from various MNCs and see through their automation of performance management in initiation process to enable teams and individuals to contribute to continuous improvement of business processes and performance. Now, before handing over the control to Suandi, here are some housekeeping instructions that I would like to share with you. All phones are set to mute. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat window located beside the presentation panel. We have received few questions from the restaurants, which will be answered by the speakers during Q&A session. We will continue to collect more questions during the session and will try to answer them during today's session. In case if you do not receive answers to your questions today, you will certainly receive answers via email shortly. Thank you for your participation and enjoy the session. Over to you, Suvandi. Thank you, Manali. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. It is really an honor to be invited by Synergita to share my uh, 20 over years experience in HIMS, in particular the uh, performance appraisal uh, system. Uh, before the system really is about the processes itself, the contents of your appraisal process in your organization. And I have really unforgettable experiences, uh, which I'm uh, so happy to share. It will be a straightforward sharing. So if any scenarios that I happen to bring it up, uh, that may be something that is familiar to you, then there is uh, probably something that I just really, uh, from my memory, and I just want to put it out straightforwardly. So the insights that I'm sharing is primarily in my observation of the various uh, parties in the companies to react to the appraisal process. The HR, of course, the administrator, the CEO, even the staff department head, what are their reactions? So I hope this session will be something that is relevant for what you're looking for and hopefully is inspiring as well. So there are just simply four examples that I want to cite in my years of experience. Two, uh, what I think very good <laughs> and to balance it out, two that what I think not so very good. So let's go straight into it. Uh, highlight the sample from the first organization. Uh, I would say this is a very good outcome uh, result of implementing the appraisal process and the system. Uh, it is actually a local company in Singapore. It was a growing company and subsequently it was merged with a multinational companies. Industry uh, in a building and utilities management services. You can imagine they are spread out in various locations of the country. And they have staff that are ranking from this uh, uniform staff to the line manager, supervisor, regional supervisors, department manager, and of course to the offices people as well as the CEO. What are the situations? My first contact with the HR. Uh, HR really shows that very knowledgeable. They know exactly what they want to practice uh, the appraisal in the company. They share with me the existing appraisal forms, the contents, the workflows, the methodologies, the weightage, the calculations, some based on the goal setting, competency setting, they want qualitative assessments, uh, some of them considering some peer feedback, etc. So I had the impression they really are very knowledgeable and quite sure what they want to practice. Subsequently, and this is only subsequently, that I found out that the CEO uh, actually saw the need of it. And I only saw this symptom when the day we roll out the system. 
the CEO really saw the need of such an appraisal system, very supportive about it, and most importantly, wanted to automate the whole process. And subsequently, also, I just I realized after we roll out the system that there were actually quite a good aligned approach between the HR team and the CEO. So if there's one point you may want to take note from this session, I think for the success of rolling up appraisal process in organizations is really about the alignment of the HR team who champion the rolling up of the appraisal system and the decision maker, really the top guy, the CEO. This is from my own observation. So let me show you, share with you what happened and what I call the wow happenings because this example for the first organization is what I call a good outcome. So what happened? HR, at the time, I would say in this company, the HR team was quite new to the organization. They knew the, pro the practices that had been over the years. They wanted to redesign the contents. So from there, my role came in is where we look at all the contents and to make sure that this contents was really also got a buy-in from the top guy, right? And so obviously, I, as an outsider, I did not really get to know what exactly day-to-day -day conversation they have between the HR and the CEO. But I was later, I really later realized that this was really uh, very, very supportive by the CEO. So I, again, my point to you is that if you are from the HR side, looking into automating the staff appraisal process, be sure to align with the top guy. So as a service provider, as a software provider, so my role really was to make sure the contents and methods can be configured in the system. That means the system can really handle those contents that the clients want, the methods, the calculation, the weightage, etc., the workflows, who will approve, who will review the appraisal, make sure that the workflows are all correctly mapped out. Uh, and obviously along the way, as a staff and manager doing their own appraisal, they need a lot of decision support information. Can this system provide this on the go? So again, this is something that, uh, you know, my role and to ensure that work with the HR team. Uh, reports and analysis, those are important. So obviously the key factors in the system really is all these parameters. So obviously if you, after this session or in the future, you do work with Synergita to consider implementing a system, do make sure all these processes are addressed. So this is what I went through, what happened, uh, but the wall happenings, this is what happened on the, on, on the rollout day. The CEO and HR met compulsory to all department heads to attend the system rollout session. So you can imagine that, you know, the department heads are from different parts of the country, they all must come. Okay, you can say Singapore is very uh, reasonably small, transportation is really good, but yet, the what, st what stood out for me was that the CEO and HR said, this is a compulsory session. If the line department manager not attending and not being part of the ownership in the beginning, how could the system be supported by everybody in the organization? So I was very impressed by that, that it was compulsory. And I can see the big meeting room full of the department had come from different places. Some of them were in uniform. So very interesting. And then, you know, from a system provider, I was supposed to be standing up in the front to all these department heads to talk about how the system rollout gonna be, but instead it was a CEO who stood up and talked about it. Very impressive to me. So the message from CEO is very clear. Strictly adhere to these new practices and the new system that we put in place. So the message was very, very uh, strong and clear. And uh, the result of that, the CEO was even saying that because they invested in the system to automate it and they want all department heads to support it, to follow the practice, then they say that the process of the entire appraisal cycle could now be even closer. So from used to be once a year, so they say, he said that let's do it at four times a year. And that was amazing because such a big change, you know, right? I think if some of you in the audience are HR practitioners, you know, to administer once a year appraisal is such a challenge. But this CEO was saying, let's do it four times. And he went on to explain the rationale why we need to do four times. We cannot just do once a year and expect to do it very well. So 
there was amazing observations. So uh, again, I find this incidence, you know, in, in my working life of, you know, implementing a system, there is nothing more satisfying to see that even the CEO at the top is so supportive of the initiative by the HR and what we do to automate the entire process. So this is really what I think the key uh, message in this first example that I'm highlighting here. Align the content properly, make sure that the buy-in from the CEO for the department heads. Yeah, so that is exactly the, the, the first point. So um, before I go on to the second example, I thought maybe have a polling question here. I think Manali will probably type this one out on the uh, platform. Uh, I will give you about 40 seconds maybe uh, to uh, get your feedback to participate about what you think about your current appraisal content and processes in the organization. Do you think they need to be reviewed or not? So I will stop here for 40 seconds. If you have any of these questions also, please feel free to write it down later to, 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 to ask so we can, you know, answer that in the Q&A session or subsequently by email. Okay, uh, shall I go on to the uh, next uh, case? So let me call this a second example from a second organization. This one, I would say the most interesting, I think is a highlight of my career in terms of rolling out a appraisal system. It was a regional company, growing company. Subsequently, it can merge with the multinational companies in the manufacturing industry and distribution of their product that are manufactured. Now, you could see that these situations uh, that happened over there in the company was pretty much the same as the first company just now. It is pretty much the same uh, for every company uh, that I work with. I find that the HR are very knowledgeable. They know the practices that they want to do, the content of appraisals and all that. And I see for this case, again, they align with the CEO. Um, but there's something extra in this second case, which is I, in the process of implementing the system for them, I found that they did invest in studying suitable practices for that industry. So again, if some of you in the audience today are looking at, you know, properly reviewing your appraisal process. So maybe this is a one point, it's really to, uh, invest some time and see what kind of uh, your industry, what practices, what contents are relevant. Uh, they had something called a Lominger system, uh, which they shared with me. It was like a card game. Uh, and so in the appraisal process, the line managers and the staff are supposed to be like playing cards through a Lominger system. Some of you may be familiar with it. It was new to me. I never knew about it. But it was quite interesting to see how they practice it. Even some of the practice that they want, they want to have a qualitative uh, assessment. So they say, can your system, Suwandi, can your system uh, incorporate something like what I call start, stop and continue? I say, what does it, what is it, what is it? Uh, it is something for, let's say, a manager to tap in uh, what do they want their staff to start doing, to stop doing and to continue doing. So again, this start, stop, continue is something that I could not forget because I found that I learned a lot from this client that invested time to study what's suitable for their industries. And they also want the other way around. The, em the employee can actually type something qualitatively to feedback about the manager. So they want two fields. One is, called, one is called, what do I want to see my managers do more of? What do I want to see my manager do less of? So again, I, as a system person, I did not know what this practice is, but I learned a lot from this client and they learn from the industry practice. They, they do go out and find out what sort of best practices for the industry. This is a point that I think should be taken notice as well for some of you who are in the HR side. So again, what happened in this organization when we roll up the system? So same thing. Uh, we redesign, we make sure that the content and the processes are configured well in the system, make sure the decision support is there, the report is there, and the happenings, this is what happened. Couldn't be more satisfying if you are a service provider and the day we roll out the e-appraisal system, 
there was a special celebration. The next slide, I will show some photos. And there was a 360 degree peer appraisal roll up. And so that was quite amazing. Uh, everybody that I see in their company, their appraisal will be at least done by another eight of their colleagues. Another eight of their colleagues, everybody. So as a result, I see that everybody is so courteous to everybody. They have a sense of uh, mutual respect atmosphere and working with them you know, for a close period of time, I can see that everybody is so courteous and their mutual respect because they may be invited to give a appraisal on their peer or on their manager or on their staff. So that's amazing. So here are some of the photos. I mean, as a service provider, I, I was so touched, you know, the customer actually prepare, order a cake. If you can read the wording or the picture of the cake on the left there, say congratulations on the e successful rollout of the e appraisal system. So there was a younger me on the right hand side <laughs> with uh, some HR team there cutting the cakes. And on the left hand side here, these photos here, you can see that there were, this was ranging from the CFO, the CEO, the O&D director, organization and development director, the IT director and the HR team. So everybody tossed on the day of rollout the system. And this picture was subsequently used on the right hand side for the internal newsletter. So even up to today, this is some years ago, up to today, it still sent the chills on my, <laughs> to my spine. It still make my hair stand because I feel it was so moving that you know, the client is so supportive of each other uh, in this whole process of appraisal. And uh, not just a nice side, you can see that I exactly, I knew that one day I may use this example to share with the communities of HR. So actually all this wordy here was actually the feedback during the system rollout. And I exactly didn't change a word at all. I copied, I put it there and it's not probably you can read through some of it, but you could see that not all of them are positive. Right? Some of them actually feel uh, the system can be this, can be that. They do feedback about the system, about the process. So you could see the feedback can be from the manufacturing director, could be from the marketing director, right? To the subsequent slide, could be from a normal usual staff, you know, there's operation on the, on the, on the factory floor uh, and they all feedback about what they say about the system. So you could say that this entire process where there is a buy-in, there's alignment with the top management, there's a commitment. Then you can see that you get everybody buys in and people really bother to type comment and feedback about the process, about the system. And so I think you can see a huge difference when you see that if people bother to give feedback and, and, and then that means the process is successful. So really I feel that this is something that is so uh, unforgettable for me. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be able to share with you today as well. I hope when you do roll out some system or some processes, whether it's HR, any initiative in your company, you get people buy in and you get your staff uh, from the department head to the executive staff can give feedback and get involved. So I think this is the, the thing that's really good. So with this, maybe again, if you can also give us some feedback also on what you think, the current level of communication uh, or the level of understanding on the performance appraisal content and processes in your organization. Do you think that currently the level of communication and understanding is already very good? Most staff are clear on the content and process and are supportive or needs further improvement or unsure about it. So I just want to know about, you know, how uh, currently you feel about the organization. Again, I will pause here for 40 seconds or so for let you to poll. Right, they say the feedback, the best feedback is probably so spontaneous, right? So, uh, okay, <laughs> I hope that uh, you can give us that feedback. Let me go on to the next two cases. There are only four cases to, to cite. That's all uh, my presentation. Um, so let's go on to not just the nice part of it. I do have the downside as well. You know, this uh, case of organization number three, uh, I, I would say that not so good outcome as compared to the other two. It was a local company growing again, they acquired, acquired by the multinational company subsequently. 
in the business of trading, retail, and distributions. So you could see there's really no doubt whatsoever the HR again is not knowledgeable and sure on the process. But that was it. And I found out later any issue arise apparently has become an escalation issue rather than get a buy-in from the beginning. So what happened? Again, we did the same thing, make sure that the content and the process are uh, can be catered for in the system. But the setback happenings is here. Uh, it seems to be not a strong enforcement or the practice that they want to do. So what made me say that? Can you imagine that when I, the day of rolling out the system, when I stood up and Talk less than two minutes. Already, the staff are so skeptical about it, and they begin to, you know, sort of uh, give a whole cold, cold water to the whole process. So, and the HR seems to be pretty much, you know, accommodative. And instead of the contrast to the first case there, where the CEO said, "Let's strictly follow this for now. We will see what was the impact, what was the feedback." So I think the enforcement was not very, very strong. And it was too, what I call it, uh, sort of receptive, not cooperative. Again, this was a symptom that I saw, whether the cause of that is that because they didn't align, they didn't get buy-in in the beginning, maybe there was impact. But to me, it was a really setback happening where the enforcement is not strong, staff become not cooperative and not receptive. And any alignment with management later on after seeing all these symptoms of stuff not receptive and not cooperative it is become an escalation issue and so it is really not handled in a, from the beginning maybe so again i just want to share this example as a contrast so hopefully some of these cases apparently i some of you may come across but maybe you need to review that and you know really get a buy-in from the beginning uh, so again, today's session for me is to share my encounters. Uh, some of it, I do not know how they detail on the day to day, how to communicate to the staff, to the CEO, but these are the symptoms that can potentially happen. And as a result, the system roll up or put on hold. So to me, that was not very good. The system is as good as it is used. If you initiate something, a process or appraisal, if it's put on hold, then to me, that's not really good. Um, I highlight sim almost similar case for uh, organization number four. Uh, this was a growing regionally company, not a small company, quite a big company, a few thousand employees. Engineering, technology services, distribution and retail management. Again, the HR, no doubt about it. All the HR people I work with, they are, they are very knowledgeable. They know the contents. And usually the lagging part is the enforcement of it. So again, what happened? Again, we did all the configuration, but for this case, I was invited to the management meeting. Can you imagine just as a vendor? I was, I was invited into the management meeting where all the department had, and they talked about how they're gonna handle this stuff situation where they're not receptive about the way they want to do the performance appraisal process and where we already configured the system. <laughs> So uh, I think the buying in really to me was still the lacking. So uh, again, this could be an internal issue if the department heads and CEO are concerned about the impact. So again, if you invest into a system, uh, into a process, but yet in the first place, uh, you're not sure about the impact, maybe you should address the impact first or the possibility first rather than uh, what I think wasting a lot of time on trying to you know, configure and automate the process, but the impact is not very clear. It's not very uh, strong enforcement. Yeah. So again, the system will put on hold. Uh, so I hope I'm sharing this, uh, my past experience. Some are very glory. Uh, uh, some are really very uh, uh, need to be handled better. And hopefully through this process, uh, you can actually uh, uh, what I would share with you, this next slide is about the conclusion. I find that all the HR are very knowledgeable, all are very sure, but for those who what I call a good outcome, they really make invest more efforts in studying what best practices, they benchmark with the industry, they get the buy-in from the CEO, from the department head, from the early stage and every stage of the rollout. And then once they are agreed 
they are aligned, then the rollup is compulsory. People just have to go through the motion first and see how, how it goes. It has to be, have some level of confidence to roll it up. Then you will see whether what's the impact later on. Yeah. So whereas the less not the not so good one, I find that they, they are less dynamic to adapt. Uh, communication is a bit lacking. Alignment is only when there's a, any issue. Uh, and I think the approach to the whole appraisal process was rather open-ended. Uh, sometimes too open-ended, not so good because the staff may find it as if the HR is not sure of what is best, what is suitable. So um, these are my conclusions. Obviously, there is no limit to how much I can share with you on that. It's just a given this session, I felt that you know the 20 or 25 minutes here that I share with you, hopefully that makes sense for you. I wrap it up with one last, last slide here, or before I go to the last slide, maybe you can again give us a feedback about your organizations. Uh, is it currently any automated system, e-appraisal system so-called, uh, in place already? Uh, maybe give us a feedback on it, whether there's a yes, no, or unsure about it. I will again stop for 30 seconds before I come back to share my last slide before Joyce handing over to Joyce. Okay, let me move to the last uh, slide. So this is uh, again, could be a topic of another day altogether. Uh, again, uh, I was from the system vendor but in my over years of experience, if I were to see from your perspective, working with system vendors, this is again just a summary. I think I could have another webinar on this particular topic alone. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's about finding solution partner uh, instead of just a supplier. In my whole experience, I shared with you going through the appraisal process in the organization. Uh, initially, when you first met up with the software provider or me as a software provider meeting with my customer, it is as if like a, a supplier customer kind of situation. But as we work together, we find that the partnership, you know, we really are on the same side. If the system succeeds, everybody celebrate together. But if it fails, we also wonder why we have to go take all this impact together as a partner. So you got to work together with a partnership in mind rather than just a supplier or customer kind of thing. So to me, this is really uh, one big aspect. Who is the owner? The owner. I mean, my client asked me, who is the owner of your company? They want to know the owner of the company. They want to know who makes a call. And also for me, the word owner can be actually, you know, who are the people we need to align to get the buy-in? You know, certain department, maybe the operational is more challenged. Uh, so you need to talk to that department head to get the buy-in. The owner is on that buy that department head. So again, all this is something that you really have to work it up early before you 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 know you roll up any system, any specialization. Like people always ask, I was helping happen to be from a vendor, from various vendors that are specialized only in HR. Uh, we didn't do manufacturing software or sales software or, or customer relations software. So we were a specialization. So if you find a software provider, find a specialized in the HR area or appraisal area. So that will be the key as well. Knowledge, the experience. I mean, my client asked me to take them to my client to see how they roll out of the system before they consider to work with me. So again, feel free to ask your vendors, uh, you know, in this case to say that, are you, uh, are you able to show me some live cases, you know, some, uh, a case study or, or, or a reference site. Yeah. And I think uh, feel free to deep dive, walk through the system, you know, maybe what I call it a workshop. Maybe this should be done after both parties are comfortable with what they think roughly the investment amount is. But a workshop uh, that is non-committed, but a deep dive to walk through to ensure the success to me, that is very important. I, I was more than happy to always facilitate this to my client because that is the only way the client will feel. And this is only way also for me as a provider to feel, to know what may be missing, you know, uh, in the communications. So I think this is the one proof of concept. Use relevant and representative scenarios. So I find that this is uh, all my working life. Uh, it's really about stick by these values and work with the, with the clients. And I hope 
for you if you are looking for a system solution. With these values in mind, find some partnerships. And that's probably uh, increase the chance of success for them. So I'm very grateful to be invited to share for these 20, 25 minutes for today webinar. Um, and uh, I hope it's relevant. I hope it's inspiring. I look forward to you know seeing any questions later on in the Q&A session. But meantime, I should hang over to uh, Joyce over here to continue with the second session. Thank you, Suwandi. Now I would Thank like you. to hand over the control to Joyce. Uh, meanwhile, uh, all the attendees can uh, send in questions if they have any. And uh, over to Joyce then. Okay. Uh, thank you, Manali. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Joyce. Uh, firstly, I would really like to thank um, Suwandi for having the sharing sessions with us. As we all know that um, in, in throughout our organizations, and throughout HR experience, um, it's never always beautiful with rainbows. There will be times that it's rainy, uh, rainy and stormy. So um, I really appreciate this um, genuine and sincere sharing uh, coming from Suwandi. And I believe that um, in most organizations, you might fall under any one of the particular, you know, um, scenario whereby he just shared. So, um, we in Synergita, we are actually a continuous feedback employee performance management and engagement software. Over the years, um, we have gotten several awards like Microsoft Code of Honor, Cody Finalist Best Human Capital Award. So, um, we have like... In the recent um, Harvard Business Review, right, uh, it has also published that more and more organizations are moving away from the traditional once a year annual appraisal and they are moving towards like continuous feedback in order to have higher employee engagement because um, engagement is really the key to actually um, produce high employee performance. So in Synergita, we actually focus to produce people magic, whereby we help organizations create an extraordinary culture to help employees unleash their potentials to create wonders in the organizations. Because um, a lot of times, I think um, to automate a performance appraisal, right, it's not just um, translating a feedback form from a manual copy into a system. It's more than that. Otherwise, it's just doing setting your goals and KPIs at the beginning of the year, and then you just wait until the end of financial year, you will just start your performance appraisal cycle, and people will just do it for the sake of doing it. So um, we actually realized that to keep employees engaged along the years. Um, it is important to have continuous feedback. We must talk to them regularly. And along the way, if they do good, we can actually have some rewards and recognitions. Uh, managers can also do periodic check-ins to check in to see how they are at um, in terms of achieving their targets. And even if there are, there are points where they are lacking, they are not achieving their goals so far, managers should actually feedback on it. Even on small competencies such as um, uh, they are actually getting late very often, they can actually send areas of improvement to say, oh, please focus on your punctuality as such. We want to focus on the holistic employee development um, in Synergita. So uh, Synergita is um, conveniently available on mobile app, both iOS and Android. As you can see on the screen here, um, it's available on dashboard and as a manager, you can easily reach out to your team. You can provide continuous feedback using a mobile app. This is something like a social media feedback wall like in Facebook where you can scroll, scroll, see what's happening in the organization, who has gotten a certain award and you can continue to send your congratulatory notes to promote an overall positive environment in the organization. And also just so that during performance appraisal, right, managers can actually claw out what was the continuous feedback that has happened for this employee along the year to refresh his or her memory to provide a better performance appraisal um, a manager's, from a manager's feedback perspective. So yeah, um, mobile app is also available in terms of providing continuous goals management. Employees can update their goals along the way. Uh, say if they close uh, any deals, be having a sales target as one of the smart goals, they can easily update their goals and achievements. 
And once performance appraisal uh, is done, right, I think um, the reports will be very important to most of the HR because this is where you will be able to judge who are the high performers, who are actually the ones who need to be sent for some technical training and also to see what are the perception gap analysis, um, strength and witness, etc. etc. So yeah, so um, Synergita is actually very simple and easy to use, easily available on mobile app. And in terms of workflow, very configurable and um, extensive reporting is available. And we can actually integrate with um, pretty much most of the uh, HRIS in the market. And in order to in order to benefit the organizations, we really want to focus on high performance, better collaboration, holistic development, and stress-free appraisals. Yep, so um, I've pretty much wrap up a very quick um, Synergita introduction. Um, we're actually very sincere to share more about Synergita, more about how the HR trend is moving towards digital transformation. So please feel free to reach out to us um, or to write in to Manali and feel free to ask any questions if you have. Back to you, Manali. Thank you, Joyce. So yeah, we have questions for Suwandi. Uh, okay. One of our attendees has asked, uh, can we know some details on how methods and workflows are configured in an appraisal system? Okay, right. Uh, for methods that I've observed so far, you know, generally the HR team that I work with, they say certain executive staff, they want to have a goal setting, right? So there has to be a goal section in a system maybe to be able to uh, allow staff to define their goals. Uh, and uh, some segment of the staff, like the manufacturing uh, uh, company that I cited with, they they don't have so much of a goal setting, but they, they need to be assessed based on competencies, right? So various competencies. And uh, the method in terms of that, they, they want to uh, have a weighted split between, say, goals. Uh, maybe certain level of staff goals have like a higher weightage maybe something like 70%, competency only 30%. Or besides goal setting or competency setting, I've come across companies who, who like I mentioned just now, they want a qualitative assessment. So that means both manager and staff can type in their comments uh, on those process. And in terms of various methods in the market, I, I must say that I learned quite a lot from my uh, client HR team. They go by average. They go by the uh, uh, the ranking system, like one to ten, or some of them even one point five rating rating systems. So uh, those processes are, are something that I've come across. I I hope I answer the questions for that. Thank you, Suwandi. Uh, another question again for you. Uh, one of the person asked, what should be kept in mind while choosing the right software? Mm. Like what was in your mind? Yeah, I, I, I think that that is a question that I, I enjoy the most. To, to, I think that is thanks for that question. Uh, like I mentioned in my last slide just now, uh, really know the software provider. Uh, the specialized, are they specialized in this area? Uh, are they, uh, what are their experience in rolling up the, the system for their clients? Uh, what uh, kind of uh, pro uh, facilitation can they make for you? Like I mentioned just now, the deep dive uh, workshop sessions. Um, somehow in the market, you might find that some vendors could be very concerned about the time they spend with you without knowing whether they will get the deal from you or not, right? But uh, I, as a provider of a system, in my value, I always find that, you know, really, Let's understand what the client's uh, requirements in details by having a workshop, what I call a workshop kind of a deep dive kind of process. So only from this realistic questioning and uh, working together that we know each other better. And then that's why from there, you can move from a supplier and a customer kind of situation to become like a partner kind of situation. Yeah. So. Uh, that is what I have experienced. Um, one point I will always make to a point uh, to share with customers. Don't be uh, confused by the features. Uh, 
because there are so many software vendors that can come up with so many features, you have to focus on what is suitable for your organization, what is applicable to your organizations. And then from there, you seek out a feature that suits your requirements rather than be driven by the features. Yeah. So that's a few part of it. And like I said, this topic, I probably can have another webinar for this topic alone, but those are the things I can share for that. Definitely so. So uh, how tough was it for you to find the perfect vendor or supplier, so Wendy? Like what made you take the decision to go with the one that you chose? It's hard to find a perfect one for sure, right? Because uh, I think the sensitive areas are, for example, the time spent, the cost incurred, the revenue involved. I mean, let's let's be very honest about it, right? I always tell my client, you know, uh, to my age, I mean, some of you cannot see me, but I say I, I'm not so very old, but I'm not very young either. I just say that if I go to see a, a customer today, I would just say that, look, you know, it's not that I've been working in this area for 20 over years, like it or not, but this 20 years means I've been through so many of it. And let's just talk openly about, about it. So if you can be open up about the situation, for example, like what is your price? You know, you can tell the vendor, the vendor said, I will give you my lease price, but I'm open for aligning it with your budget. So sensitive, sensitive matter like cost, revenue, let's open up and talk through it, right? And uh, if that can be aligned somewhat, then let's say, let's, are you willing to spend more time with me going through, let's say a whole day or half a day where you show me step by step how you configure my competency into your system? How do you define the workflow for me in your system? So I find that the sincerity comes in when, you know, both parties are really open up about it. Because I always tell the client, no worry about it. It's either a deal or no deal, right? <laughs> So, but there's nothing better than making friends, you know, like, you know, you know each other better and say, you know, uh, what is it that you're trying to solve for your organization? How can I help? Right. Yeah. And in terms of cost, there are many ways, right? There's a science and, 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 and logic, you know, it can be a case where if you have a limited, I've got a client who told me, I, I need to do it urgently this year, but I, I made a mistake. I didn't put in a budget this year. And so how can you help me? I say, can you kind of put it to next year for me so I can do it for you for maybe less cost this year, but you pay me back a bit more next year. You're right. So there are many ways of it, but just be open and be frank about it. Be there to talk about sensitive item, cost, revenue, time span, <laughs> worth it or not, profitable or not, <laughs> that kind of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Suvan. Uh, so another one is, uh, can any type of appraisal process be implemented in HRMS? Like maybe combination of appraisal process different for head of departments and other employees. So is Absolutely. it possible? Absolutely. I think to me, if a good system, I'm not so, uh, so familiar with Synergita system yet, but I think that any good appraisal system should allow uh, defining, creating many different what we call templates, right? Certain templates for certain department, certain templates for certain level of staff. You must be able to have that flexibility. Within each template, you should be able to configure only say goal setting only, or only competency setting only, or only qualitative only, or only engagement uh, uh, components only. Even when defining a goal, you should have that flexibility. I have a client who told me, I want a smart goal. I said, every goal is smart. They said, no, no, no. I mean, smart, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, et cetera, right? So these are the methods of uh, science of uh, HR. I think the software should be have that, should have flexibility to configure it uh, very, very clearly so that when the user uses it to set goals, they are like, answering questions only to define their goals. Uh, so it has to be value add for that. I believe it should be able to handle such a situation. Thank you, Suvandeep. Uh, so there are more questions, but uh, we have to wind up the session as of now. So we'll be sharing the questions uh, uh, answers with you through email. And uh, thank you all for joining us for this session today. Uh, hope you all had an informative session. And thank you, Suvandeep and Joyce for sharing your experiences with us. It was really uh, an informative session for us. And uh, guys, you. if you have any questions, please feel free to send it at info at synergita.com and we'll be happy to address those and right. also we'll be sharing the recorded version of this webinar with all of you 
So thank you all. Thank you, Suvandi. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you.